Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And somebody asked me a question: How to make astrology super simple? How to make it easy and understandable to the general public or to the newcomers? Because at times we get overwhelmed by the amount of information that we can get from YouTube or from different astrology courses, or even just by looking at a horoscope. Right? It's an overwhelming amount of information which we are bombarded with. And then sometimes we have no idea of what to look for even. So therefore today we shall try to discuss some tips and tricks by which we can understand astrology easily. Not easily, easy in a, in a, in a bit more easier way or I would say structured way all right so therefore it is very crucial that we do not overly complicate things okay because things are anyways very complex but the question is why is astrology so complex because imagine uh, psychology imagine uh, science physics chemistry they are also very complicated and then think of astrology. Astrology talks about your body. It talks about your relationships. It talks about your career, your name, fame, status, money, your spiritual life, everything. Imagine, imagine a subject which does not leave any area of your life. How vast, how difficult, how complicated that subject would be. And yes, many times we don't know, but we are the ones who are studying we are the students of that very subject which is astrology okay so therefore we should not expect a very easy journey ahead okay but at the same time we should not we need not make things more complicated than they are already so the first thing that we should do in that case is we should know the basics very well which means that we should understand what does every area stands for? What does every term in astrology mean? Now you may be thinking, oh, this, this is not a big issue. You know, we already know what does this planet mean? What does houses mean? We know what are aspects. We know what is this. We know what is that. No, I'm not talking of that. What I'm telling is you have to know, even though you know them individually, okay? Still you don't. Because I have seen so many people, they don't even properly have knowledge of, of basic zodiac signs. They have no knowledge of the planets. Now, every planet has certain keywords. You know, like for example, Saturn stands for you know discipline, commitment, structure, anything which is slow, anything which takes time. But that that's not what Saturn is. Saturn is much more than that <laughs> saturn can mean so many things in our career it can mean in our spiritual life it can mean in our married life it can mean in our in case of our health so therefore we need to understand the importance of each and every area in detail and we should we should understand how to apply these principles okay in each and every area of our life so for example one of the most frequently asked questions to me is, oh, actually, you know, my uh, Venus is in a good dignity in the D1 chart and it is in a bad dignity in the D9 chart. Okay, so it's very complicated. You know, what will happen at the end of the day? Okay, or the other way around. It's good there and it's bad there. Okay, so... Half of the astrology problems can be solved if we stop using these useless and I would say sometimes disgusting words like good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, achcha hai, bura hai, shubh hai, ashubh hai. There's no good, bad. I mean, every planet is good for certain areas and not good for certain areas. Okay. And every planet is having some weaknesses, some inherent deficiencies, which only by using our spiritual practices, we can, uh, uh, we can come out of them. Okay. And uh, not that every planet just uh, 
gives you whatever you want all right not even the ninth lord not even jupiter not even sun no there's no planet which does that so this question that one planet is here in the d1 and it is there in the d9 you know this is good this is bad plus minus zero no it, it doesn't work like that the only thing which becomes zero is our intelligence if we read uh, go through astrology like that and many times people say uh, i have heard uh, i have heard my friends saying uh, my people within the astrology community then clients who i consult they always tell me oh sir actually you know my seventh lord is good here but there it's not that great you know so so it, it's not that great after all my married life you know or my career is like it's uh, somewhere in between so this happens because we do not understand the individual importance of the lagna chart and the navamsha chart okay this is a very drastic example which i am telling you why it seems that it is very complicated because now if you tell somebody is a newcomer in astrology and suppose he has one planet which is exalted in the lagna chart and it is debilitated in the d9 chart so then he sees all these videos and he, he reads all these uh, articles and then he's confused he's like okay it is good there it's bad there so what happens in my life ultimately D does it mean that nothing happens so does it mean that i don't get married or will i get married or will i have love or romance in my life what what does it mean well d1 chart has a totally different meaning and a d9 chart and the d9 chart has a totally different meaning a planet in the d1 will give you results all right in that area irrespective of how it is placed in the navamsha and a planet in d9 will give you results in that area irrespective of how it is placed in d10 or d11 d12 d d d3000 okay or even the d9 or sorry the d1 okay so we should stop playing these you know mix games you know it's it's not like a smoothie you know just put in everything there and you know just uh, put it in the grinder it doesn't happen like that because half of the times people get uh, disheartened by uh, by getting confused oh this plant is here in d1 and then that's there in d9 what will happen no you don't don't have to complicate things unnecessarily you have to understand that okay d1 represents these these things so if this planet is placed here in this house in this sign this will happen and then for d9 this will happen okay so therefore we need to understand what the planets represent specifically in d1 and then d9 then this problem will not come the problem is we do not know what they represent therefore we keep playing all these games and the same is with uh, the d10 chart all right somebody's 10th uh, lord of lagna chart is uh, in the 11th house and then the person has a uh, very bad quote and quote d10 okay or very weak or not very good not very nice all the typical astrology terms you know good bad nice not nice terrible fantastic so then the 10th lord is not that is exalted or is great or is in the 11th of the lagna chart and then in the d10 the d10 is not very good the d10 is not very strong then what will happen well they will hold true individually this exaltation or the strength of this 10th lord will not be nullified by a bad dashamsha the dashamsha has a different purpose it has a different meaning all right so when we know all these things when we know the individual uh, parts of astrology properly strongly uh, with 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 a strong base then we will realize that oh it's not very difficult i know here this this will give me these results and then there it will give me these results it's it is very simple actually okay i mean not the analysis itself is not simple that is a detailed analysis but we don't have to overly complicate the analysis okay because 99% of the people have extremities when it comes to lagna and d9 and sometimes it's so it's so funny that a planet is in mahapurush yoga in the d1 and then in d9 is debilitated and then in d10 it goes to exaltation so how the hell do you figure it out all right so then then what do you do you play okay mahapurush is one 
debilitation is zero you know it's like negative one and then exaltation is again one so two minus one is one so ultimately it is good right no it doesn't work like that and that is why people get confused oh sir planet d1 me idhar hai d9 me idhar d10 me idhar hai kya hoga mere sir no it doesn't work like that all right so therefore that is the first thing that we should understand we have to deeply study and research the individual areas and only and then apply the principles all right the second thing is to simplify astrology is we have to understand that there is something called as desh kal patra okay desh kal patra means time place circumstances which is very 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 very, 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 very crucial so for example you look at a horoscope and then you see the ninth lord is in the lagna or uh, the lagna lord is in the ninth or the lagna lord and the ninth lord is conjunct somewhere okay maybe in the lagna or in the ninth or in the fifth okay or you see that the person's jupiter is very well placed the jupiter jupiter is with the moon or aspecting the ascendant or some something like that very good so then this can mean a million things okay so therefore it is very 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 crucial that apart from the astrological analysis which you will definitely have to do you must talk to the client or the person or the friend or at least get a idea of who they are at a personal level because we are not nobody is rishi parashara here at least i am not that we will look at a horoscope and we will come to know everything it doesn't work like that ninth lord in the lagna can have a totally different meaning for a person who is born in usa united states of america and a person who is born in india totally different meaning because they are from a different Uh, the the time place circumstance is different ninth lord in the lagna can have a totally different meaning for somebody born 100 years back and somebody who is born now what if that ninth lord is a malefic what if that ninth lord is a natural benefic where you see changes the game so we have to know what kind of society the person is born okay because let let me give you another graphic example let's talk about marriage so half of the questions of astrology are pertaining to marriage or relationships indirectly or directly and the remaining half is about career so if somebody asks you that my dear sir when will i get married well you can look at the horoscope something which we can understand by our common sense is that the person in generally will not get married before around 20 or you know around 20 21 that that's like the least age even today so um, then we can see that after that age 22 23 or 25 which dasha the person is running okay not transit dashas and then we can see that when is the next favorable dasha on the second seventh or the 11th house uh, lord or the planet sitting there is coming but 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 what if the person is born in a place which is very much focused towards career or you know earning money and you know just putting aside family in the back and just you know going out there and trying to prove that you know you are a very career oriented person or you are very successful in your career well then it might happen that between the ages of 23 and 26 imagine he is running uh, maybe venus mahadasha okay maybe he is running venus jupiter okay or venus saturn three years so imagine his venus saturn starts at 23 and venus saturn goes on till um, 26 okay those three years it might happen that even if that saturn is signifying the second seventh and 11th house or either of these three or maybe more than one also by nakshatras the person doesn't get married because the person is not interested because the upbringing which he has had from his childhood in that locality says that marriage is maybe after 30 35 okay so now that person doesn't know all this that you should consider deshkal patra in astrology okay so then he comes to you at the age of you know maybe 
and he asks you when will i get married and then he says oh my god sir you have this dasha you know 23 to 26 in the next 3 years you might get married and then this person uh, sees your mail and then he's like oh my god i'll be married in 3 years i mean i don't want to be married now now i want to focus on my career or whatever it is okay or maybe now take the other way around somebody is born in such a place where they are fully focused on you know maintaining their family and you know um, having having a marriage having kids then if you see that a person is getting a dasha which is around at the age of 30 35 then you might have to tell the person that a oh, my dear sir uh, your marriage will be a bit late it can happen around 30 32 now for that person uh, 30 32 may be very late he might become depressed oh my god till 30 i won't get married what will happen to me yes he might go into depression by thinking this now of course we don't have to directly tell that but we can give some hints and say that your marriage can be around at this time okay now why because that person from his childhood he has been fed that oh you should get married you know by 25 we should be married then you should be settled you know blah 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 all these things have been told so therefore now if it gets beyond 25 the person can uh, the for that for that person it's a very serious thing okay so then you know that if the person is from that community okay from that place then for him around 25 will be a good time period to get married so for him if he is getting a dasha after 25 which is signifying the marriage house is very strongly bang on he gets married that time all right so that simplifies your job that's that resolves half of the problem all right because you know exactly what kind of a karmic uh, what kind of a karmic cycle the person will be going through what kind of a mentality what kind of a mindset that person has okay now you can also know all these things by seeing the whole scope that is fine i am not undermining astrology's importance here but my point is that we should know the time place and circumstances all right otherwise predictions are very difficult and when i say difficult it doesn't mean it is difficult for you but even if you predict things can go wrong and it goes wrong many times i have seen all right so therefore it is very crucial that you get some background information about the practical life of the person okay and it's to with health also so therefore when i do consultations one of the most important things that i focus on is what is the person's lifestyle okay so if a person has a terrible lifestyle he's eating meat or he's eating fish eggs and you know doing intoxication or you know having a unrestricted sex life then this person is likely to be uh, more diseased always yes that that's a fact of life so therefore now if this person is in his 40s and he runs a bad dasha for his health then 100% his health will be ruined during that dasha all right but suppose a person has a very satvik lifestyle very good lifestyle he eats on time sleeps on time gets up on time and he does spiritual practices then then if he is having a bad time for his health in his 40s then he will have a faster recovery he will have a greater capacity to deal with that health problem because he has all the good habits okay so therefore uh, you must know what 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 the background of the person is what uh, and some info about his parents also if you can get that's very good but that's not required but if you can get that is very good okay because parents are sun and moon and they represent the person himself all right and the third thing which we should do when we want to simplify astrology is that we should take some guidance personally from a mentor okay because uh, there are still questions which google cannot answer all right and uh, there are questions which you will not Uh, you cannot get answers to these questions when you go to any astrology conference or attend any webinar or or read any book all right mercury cannot replace jupiter 
Should I repeat? Mercury cannot replace Jupiter. Mercury is Mercury. Jupiter is Jupiter. There is there's no doubt on this. Nowadays, people are so hellbent on using Mercury. They think that they, that can replace Jupiter. No, 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 no. In the next billion years, it can never replace. No amount of books, no amount of information, no amount of seminar, no amount of courses can even match up to a fraction of what a mentor can give it to you. Okay, I have uh, seen lives of so many uh, entrepreneurs, rich people, billionaires, millionaires, spiritually elevated people. So many I have seen. Successful in both material and spiritual, right? World. These three categories I have seen. Successful in the material world, successful in spiritual world, successful in both material and spiritual. These three categories. And of course, they have certain qualities like they are very focused, they are committed and disciplined. That is there. But one thing is above all, they have a mentor. They have had a mentor who has explained them things personally. All right. So if you really want to make the study of astrology simple, then you must have a personal mentor. Now, that doesn't mean that every five minutes you call your mentor and keep asking. It means if you are a serious student of Jyotish, then in my opinion, at least once a month, you should meet your mentor. And you should report to him or her that, oh, sir, I have uh, found this technique and then I have used it and tried it in uh, 10 horoscopes. I have seen it fails here. I have seen it works here. Why do you think? What is your opinion? Why this has happened? Okay. So then that mentor might be able to explain to you why you are failing in this area. Okay. And that only the mentor can, because the mentor knows what is your strength and what is your weakness. Right. Otherwise, you go to any webinar, any seminar, or you watch YouTube videos. It can give you some amount of information. But then what, what will happen to you if you don't have a mentor? And, um, and I know many people don't like to, to hear this. They think that YouTube can give them everything. Well, it cannot. You will, you will not realize this now. You will realize this after 5, 10, 15 years of your study of astrology. Yes, I, I get so many mails where people tell me that I have been studying Jyotish from the last 15 years, 20 years. But the only thing I know is, you know, where are my planets placed? I know Shadbala, I know Ashtagvarga, I know Digbala, I know Exaltation, I know Debilitation. The only thing I do not know is how to read them and use them practically in our lives. Except that I know everything. I know all the terms. You know, Nietzsche Bhanga, you know, Raj Bhang Nietzsche Yoga, Nietzsche Bhang Raj Yoga, Khand Samrajya Yoga. I don't know what not yogas are there, my God. <laughs> all right, so it's great to learn them. There's no harm. You know, Dharma Karma Dipati Yoga, you learn. But then how to apply them practically? That only a mentor can tell you. All right, so it is highly essential that you try to find a mentor and not some preferably not some e mentor okay from some youtube or you know, somebody physical physical means that person should be there in your city or your town and you can literally go and meet them in person one to one all right and worst case you can have you know e gurus or you know online gurus but that's that is the last thing which we should do all right and luckily, uh, Jyotish has spread uh, to most of the parts of the world. And yes, there are many parts where it has not uh, been accepted uh, truly yet. But you can at least try to find somebody in your city. And then if you don't find, you can try for uh, online or you know taking personal guidance from somebody. All right? And once we do that, then only we can understand what is my area of strength what is my area of weakness, all right? And once we know that, then we can know where we should go. Should we go into Parashari astrology more? Should we go into Gemini astrology? Should we go into Nadi astrology? Should we go into KP astrology? Okay. Of course, they are all like the same uh, astrology presented differently with focus, uh, with different areas of focus. But many times we have different interests okay so when i say you should should you learn parashari or jamini it doesn't mean you learn jamini and you forget parashari okay i don't mean to say that 
but many times we may like certain types of study okay so then the mentor can suggest us that maybe you should go and learn this okay there you go that is all from my side i hope by the doing these things we can uh, simplify our study of jyotish and of course there are uh, thousands of other techniques by which we can do simplify our study of astrology and if you are interested to write then you can please write it in the comments or if you also have a mentor you can write down that i'm in this city in this part of the world and i have this mentor so that if somebody is there in your city they can also take guidance from that mentor all right thank you very much if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me you can go to the description box where you will find the link to my website all right god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find it